Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a pretty cool tool called HTTP Server. It is part of Python's standard library, so as long as you have Python on your system you should be able to use it. I really like using this on remote servers, especially for collecting logs, you know, sharing files, or also I like to use it to troubleshoot port connectivities. It's pretty easy to use to bring up a port and then test connection, make sure that firewalls are not blocking it and that sort of things. But the best use of it is for sharing files as instead of having to SCP files down to your local system, all you have to do is start this module in the directory that you want to share and then you can just either wget or curl or you can just download those files from your web browser. So as you can see now here I'm connecting to a remote server and in this server first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share my directory. So I'm going to list the directory so we can see what's in it. And then we're gonna to compare to uh, what shows in my web browser. As you can see, these are all the files and directories that I have into my home directory. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start that HTTP server quickly so we can access it from uh, the web browser. So to start the server, all you need to do is run python 3 m httpserver followed by the port. Now, one thing here I want to mention about the ports is if you're running as a root user, you can choose any port you want. And as long as that port is not taken by another server, uh, it would work. So for example, I'm just going to do 22 now, as we expect that port is going to be already taken by SSH. And you're going to get an error like this that tells you that the port's already in use. So to get this resolved, all I have to do is rerun it with a different port. And I'm going to start the server now with port 8080. Now, just to mention this again, if you're root, you can use any port. If you're running with a non-root user, then you can only use non-register ports. So it has to be a high number of ports, something that's above uh, 1024. So in my case, I'm gonna do port 8080 and this will start my server. And now the server is serving. So I'm gonna start my uh, web browser and here you can type the IP address of your server. So 192.168.0.12 in my case, and you have to specify the port. So 8080. And now you can see the content of my home directory. And I'm just gonna go ahead and download this file txt just so you can see how it works. Actually, in, in certain files, you can just click on them and you can see the content of the file, or you can just right click and download it. And other files, not sure how it's, is it browser based or what, but uh, for example, my log files automatically download. I can't open them within the browser. Uh, I'm not sure if it's something has to do with the extension or what. If you know, let me know in the comments. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this file and now uh, we can see we have it downloaded here. And I'm gonna double click on it and as you can see, we have the file downloaded in the system. Now, another thing I wanna show you here is the way I have it right now, um, I just started the server. If I go ahead and control C out of it to close it, now the server is gonna be dead. So I can't, you know, like I, you can't use a terminal and the server at the same time if you started the way I started it here. So to run it so it can go on the background, all you have to do is add an ampersand at the end of it and that will start in the background. So the server will be running, but you'll be also able to run commands here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a second server. That's pretty cool too, is you can start as many as you want as long as there's ports available. You can start as many web servers as you want. So I'm gonna start a second one, but this time I'm gonna start it from my logs directory so you can see how cool it is to download logs with it. So I'm gonna go to var log and I'm just gonna get into here and then I'm gonna run this exact same command, but I'm gonna pick a different port. This time I'm just gonna pick port 80. Again, you can pick any port, that's why I really like it because I can easily troubleshoot ports with it. I can just open the port and then go to my web browser and see if, you know, it's going through. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead here and press enter to start it. Again, it's on a background so I can keep working while the server is up and running. So then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna start another tab and I'm gonna go to 192.168.0.12. And this time I'm not gonna specify ports since I'm listening on port 80 and the web browsers usually go on that port anyway. So as you can see, I can see the content of that logs directory and I can just go ahead and download one of my log files. So I can go ahead, download the file, double click on it. And as you can see, um, you can just browse through that file locally on your machine. Now that I've showed you all that, the only thing that's left here is how to close those. Like right now, as you can see, we have both of those servers. If I do an LTP here, so we can see we have 
uh, both ports 80 and 8080 are both open with this Python HTTP server. And how do we close those? Well, it's very easy. All you need to do is call them back out. So what you can do is first is you can run the command jobs and that will show that we have two running jobs in the background. And then from here, you can pick the one you want to close. So I first, I'm going to go ahead and close the one that listens in port 8080. And to do that, all I have to do is type FG percentage sign and then the number one. And then I can go ahead and press Control and C to exit out of it. And if I go and check my ports again, you'll see that port 80 got shut. And again, if and also if I go here and refresh, you can see that on the server is no longer listening and we do the exact same thing with the other job the one that's running on port 2 so i'm going to put 2 here and then again control and sorry control and c and then i can go ahead and refresh here and we can see that both are down and if we check our ports nothing is listening on ports 80 and 8080 and that's how it works again i really love this tool it's really useful i really find it useful um, i hope you find it useful too if you actually have any other use cases for it please let me know it'd be cool to hear what other people think about it i hope you like this video please go ahead click on the like button if you did and if you want to see more of my videos please go ahead and subscribe for my channel thank you for watching